Okay, little break time is over and we're off and running. But that was an interesting break. We had a guy pull up, wanted to make sure we're not on his land and stuff. He said, of course, he has problems with four wheelers coming out here. But we're not on four wheelers. And we looked at him and said, uh, look what we're riding. Of course, like most people, they think oh, that's just a little, little motorcycle. It's got street tires and stuff on it. Oh, it can't go in the grass, and it can't go nowhere. Surprise, surprise, but if we wanted to take the trails, we'd do it. But luckily, we haven't ran up on one yet. But, uh, anyway, something interesting about that little break we just took. Keith pulled over there and said, time to have a cigarette break. Oh, okay. So I pull over, you know, and we're going to take a cigarette break, and... Keith looks at me and says, uh, I forgot my cigarettes. Uh, get, 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 loan me one of yours. I said, sure. Opened up my pack and, uh, and showed him. Uh-oh. That'll happen sometimes. I got blinded by the sun and then the shadow lost the road and thought okay I think it was turning I'll turn slightly and I'm hitting ruts because I don't see like other people do but that's cool I'm having fun okay anyway I open my pack up and show Keith I said there you go he looks at my pack of cigarettes and there's one cigarette in there he goes oh man I said well that's all I had I said, I was going to say, let's go to the store before we leave, but I thought, ah, fooey with it. I don't need them anyway. So we, uh, what he call it, we jointed that cigarette, shared with it and stuff. Whoa, see, I didn't even see him there. Oh, he's videotaping this old church or something. We all see it in the video sometimes somewhere. I remember this church, I think. Let me see here. If there's a parking lot. Nope, there's not. Nope, I don't remember this one. But uh, years ago, must have been like 10 years ago, we got a new uh, pastor pastor preacher guy for the church I was going to and he said uh, come with him you know to this other church to have some sort of get to go or whatever fellowship I don't know yeah nope so we, uh, anyway, to continue my story, to, to continue my story, we, uh, we, uh, go to this little church, somewhat like that, see that building? It's something like that, just a little church building. And they had some sort of sunrise service or something, I'm not sure. But then after it, and this is like within the first week that the pastor was at the church. After it, he says, well, come on in. We're going into the church to have breakfast. Okay, I walk in. I notice it's a one-room church building. You know, it's just a small church out in the country. And so I stopped and seen one of the guys there kind of handing out the food. You know, dipping in, getting what you wanted. I said, is this their uh, sanctuary? Yeah, well, we use this for everything. I said, oh, okay. So I turn around and I uh, go out in the van that we got there and I sit down. It was probably a half hour or so later, the, finally the other guys that was with me, mainly the new preacher we had, he comes out. Wasn't you hungry? I said, well, actually, I, I'm very hungry. I'm kind of starving. <laughs> and why didn't you eat? And I said, I will not, under no circumstances, walk into a sanctuary 
or a place that's supposed to be a sanctuary and eat food or get food or do anything like that. To me, that's a wrong and I won't do it. He uh, kind of trying to tell me that it's okay, but be do, I'll be die. So I just looked at him and said, okay, why don't we go into the sanctuary there and exchange money? Maybe we can sell some doves or maybe some nice uh, clean goats for offering, you know, why don't we do that? He looked at me kind of funny and I said, exactly. Jesus would throw you out of your butt if he seen you doing that. Called you a freaking heathen and you'd never make it to where you think you're going. So I said, shut up, I'm sticking to my what I feel's right and that's that. Well, that's a story you guys probably didn't want to hear, but I said it anyway. Okay, where we're at, where we're going, I have no idea. Uh, again, we're off the back roads and on the solid roads. I'm going to go ahead and leave the camera on and let it run itself dead. I have a small USB card in it. And I'm going to have to get another one that has last a little longer time. I think about uh, 45 minutes is all I can really get out of this card. I asked Keith, well Keith told me he's had the GoPro on the whole time we left. And he said, you know, let it run for two hours. And I said, well, that must be nice. I get 45 minutes out of this my card. That's all I'm going to get. Oh. Now you know where we're at. Yeah. He knows where we're at now, so we're definitely lost. We go, Whatever. What time of day is it? Yeah. Let me put this in neutral so I can look. 4.14. Did you ever set the time on it? I just put it on noon to see if it'd move. Broadhead Road. Okay, Broadhead Road. I don't know what he's going with his finger up in the air. Okay. Whatever you want to do. Okay. What well, not? He said he wanted to go that way and then he turned that other way. Why did he do that? Turned my blinker on one way because he said. I think we should, son says, go this way. I thought, okay, and he says, but I want to go that way. I said, well, okay, and I turned my blinker on the other way, and then he takes off the opposite way, the way he said the son says to go. Why does the son say go that way? I have no idea. I didn't ask the son. Okay, I think we've been on this road earlier. Looks like it. It's got some very major ruts in it. Oh shoot, my lips are itching. But it, oop, got some major ruts in it on the uh, center where your uh, lines are. And you get in them and, and it, they hold you there. <laughs> they want to make your bike go down the rut. I remember that the first time we went down, I kind of went into one a little and it like the tire just fell right in it Whoop. and I had to follow it out darn it what is itching my lip oh well enjoy 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 Well, this is the, uh, I guess it's Guernsey County that we're in. 
So actually we're playing around, uh, I guess we'd call it in Keith and I's midfield. I'm from Tuscarawas County. He's from uh, Nobel County. And in between us is Guernsey County. So right now that's what we're doing is playing around in Guernsey County. But look at that center line. I mean, that's a rut. You can almost lose a bike in if you run into it. Yeah, right now we're goofing around in Guernsey County. Uh, where to next? I don't know. Of course, actually, I haven't even been looking along the side of the road to see what county we're in or where we're going to. No, I'm trying to downshift. Oh, yeah. Birmingham? Okay, it's like the sixth time we've been in Birmingham. It's a pretty big city, isn't it? Yep, Freedom Road. That's I remember going down that way. Whatever. I feel like you just made that one. Well, I think I'm wrong. Now he's debating which way to go. Okay, he's gonna follow. He's gonna follow where the sun says. It's more reliable than him. That's what he said. So he's uh, taking us on this trip by letting the sun tell him where to go. I have never in my life had a sun, star, moon, or anything like that tell me which way I should go. But at least you get to go right through the downtown Birmingham. Isn't this a beautiful city? And I think that's the end of Birmingham, right? after this dilapidated barn we're going to cross a narrow bridge ladies and gentlemen this is a narrow bridge hold on oh we just barely squeezed through that one uh, as you notice on your right and on your left the weeds are quite high don't look like they've been mowed this year so I'd say possibly the uh, highway department, road keeper upper dog guys don't make it out here. Uh, now on the way up, I noticed a lot of times Keith is downshifting. The mine was just kind of holding its pace and uh, fifth gear and going right up with him. I wasn't going any faster or anything. After our break, I, uh, ooh, don't scare me like that, gravel road. I got ready to uh, take off. I, see, I still have my mitts and everything on uh, my Rebel, ready for winter. Might be sort of silly at 80 degree weather, riding around with mitts and everything on your bike. But like I say, this is my winter bike. I'm not gonna strip it down to ride it in the summer. I'm just gonna leave it as is. Because it's my winter bike. But, uh, which I do have more accessories I'm getting ready to put on it for winter. But anyway, I forget what I was talking about. I guess maybe it wasn't important. Oh well. It don't matter. Oh yeah, yeah, it was my speed. When I uh, took off from our little break, I happened to feel my turn signal and stuff and realized, hey, what's that? So I felt again, it was my choke was halfway on. So, <laughs> 
But that's why my bike just didn't seem to have the get up and go it usually does. It's because the choke was halfway on during that trip. Well, now I got it off. Keith's in a high gear or whatever. I'm still like two gears below him. Because I, the bikes, you know, all the wrist rebels not working as hard as his is. But I figure one of these days my bike will be 10 years old. It says do not enter. It says do not enter. It's, whoa, what do you do? Uh, do not enter that way, but there's a gate across that way. It says do not enter, but it don't make sense. Is this a road? Looks like it. I wonder if it means don't enter over there. Well, why didn't they put it over there? I don't know. Well, I have to see what's going on. That is a conundrum. Oh. Oh. Third gear, it don't like to take it off very well. <laughs> Now we're going down this road and there's a sign, do not enter. But then the road that looked like it was going to the uh, left had a gate across it. It's a campground or something. It's like, now how the heck? Do not enter, but then... But I'm sure with Keith's sight and vision, he can see what's ahead and instead of figuring it out beforehand and go, oops, they don't want you down here, this is private property, he will continue on right up to the die's front door and go, oh, oh we guess we gotta turn around. <laughs> I don't know. But I would think, I'm thinking the same thing he's thinking. This is a road, the deer don't enter should have been on the other side of the road where that campground thing is. But we both could be wrong, you never know. Can you imagine that, a one-way, one-way street in the country? <laughs> a gravel one-way street. That's pretty cool, it would be the first one I've ever seen. Maybe someone will come running out. Hey, hey, you can't go that way down that dirt road. That's a one-way road, dirt road. <laughs> I was, uh... My daughter, she got her license, you know, so she uh, wanted to go pick up one of her friends that was out in the country, probably all two, three miles away from the house, but it's all country roads. And the uh, wife, for some reason, told me, you, you lead her out there. Well, there's two ways to get to the house. And the way I always took when I picked up her friend is off a main road, you just drop down, just suddenly to make a real sharp, I mean a hairpin uh, left turn off the main road onto a gravel road. And when you're doing that turn, you drop about three feet like right now, just bloom on the turn. And the daughter said that she doesn't want to do that turn, that's kind of scary to her. And I told her, well, there's another way out there, the back way. So the wife said, you show her how to get there and she can follow you. So uh, I was in my pickup at that truck. And I'm going down to where I got to turn on this dirt road to show her how to get to the back way of this girl's house. And I hit the dirt road part and I'm doing about 35 mile an hour on a gravel road which most people that I believe have any sort of knowledge in their brains at all 
they should realize a gravel road, dirt road, a uh, vehicle going down it would uh, kick up a little thing called dust. Well, the first house I go by on this gravel road, there's this, well, let's be nice, and we'll call him a gentleman. This was this gentleman out there by his house, and he's using not very gentleman language at me, yelling and screaming, saying, uh, quit stirring up all the dust. Well, I understood what he was talking about. Evidently, uh, I shouldn't be doing 35 mile an hour past his house and stirring up the dust. But uh, the only thing I could think of quickly enough to yell back at him was move. Now you live beside a gravel road. If you don't want dust flying, just move. Don't be a moron. Why'd you move there in the first place? Did you not see that there's a gravel road in front of your house? Do you not realize that gravel roads have a tendency to kick up dust when things go by? It's like, what a moron. Stop kicking up the dust. <coughs> well, another conundrum. He's trying to decide which way he's going to. Whatever! Well, I don't know why you asked me. I'm just following. Oh, maybe he's going his way now, or is it still the sun way? Wait, wait, where are we going now? He's still deciding. Let's see what he's doing here. What's I can't see? I don't know what he's doing. Well, it looks like we're going this way now. I don't know. Whichever, I don't know. Well, I, uh, this is Sunday. Keith doesn't have to be to work till 10 o'clock Monday night. Uh, I don't have to possibly be to work or anywhere till the 19th of this month when I go to work for Tasty. So if, if we get lost, I don't care. We can spend all night out here. Don't matter me. Well, I'll tell you what. I take that back. We've got 30, 36 miles on this tank of gas. So hopefully we can find civilization within 70 miles or 80 miles, 70, 80 miles. If we don't find civilization by then, we may be pushing these bikes, and I really don't want to do that. Mm -mm -mm. No, 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 no. But it's no big deal. By looking, I'm thinking we went this way before anyway, but we're going the opposite way. We're just coming up the hill instead of down the hill. And as you see, our rebels are doing about 35, 40, 45 miles an hour down on the gravel road. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We can't do that. Well, I can't. I got street tread, right? I can't drive in gravel. But I got to hang back. See how he's kicking up dust? Oop, no dust now. Went on the blacktop. Now I can catch up. Uh, 
that's one thing that's uh, surprising too riding is you'll hit blacktop like this and a lot of times we've had old roads where they would blacktop it a certain you know eighth a mile or whatever before a house and pass the house and after you pass the house about an eighth a mile it turn right back into gravel again that's always fun one lane bridge trying to definitely looks like still in Guernsey County Guernsey County loves the uh, narrow bridges and the twists and turns and you have them in Tuscarawas County also but Tuscarawas County is more on a uh, major or secondary road Ooh. where uh, your speeds are probably about 55, 60 mile an hour, and when you hit the quarters, they're made for that sort of speed, so you really get to lean a little. It's kind of fun. As for Guernsey County, it's a smaller road, but it still has all the corners and twisties, but the uh, roads are beat up and banged up. You never know what's around the corner, so. You can't really get on it at 55 and expect to take a corner and make it safe. Usually, speed limit's 55 and a little sign, yellow sign.